as the primary active constituent of the medicinal plant cannabis, also known as marijuana. Most people are familiar with the euphoric effects of this compound. After entering the bloodstream, this compound becomes available to individual cells in the brain. Delta-9 THC interacts with specific cell surface receptors. It is analogous to a key entering a lock. This triggers a reaction inside the cell. Unexpectedly, this reaction in normal cells is significantly different compared to the reaction in cancer cells. In cancer cells, these reactions lead to cell death. In normal cells, it doesn't. This surprising difference is likely due to two things. A greater number of receptors on the outside of the cancer cells and a different type of reaction inside the cancer cells as compared to the normal cells. Gracie Veterano, old family first fam Taught the world to swing that double-edged sword, it works fam BJJ from GJJ Like Cool Hurt gave birth to what your DJ plays But despite the lineage, I will never be closed-minded Refuse to see beyond the lines, you go blind Rocket travels the 10th planet, I flow free I'm welcome on mini mats, gi to no gi Though my branch traces used to the original tree Who sprouted from the original seed Water with blood, sweat, and tears, spotlight with sunlight That tree became a forest, by like Tudor done right Then hoist dominated them all in one night And hate song hasn't been beaten in one fight Flow with the gold, hit a hit on and holly know That to continue to win, we must continue to grow Let's go! Okay, but I want you to listen. I don't know where is the bank, Von Ludwig, Von Beethoven. I don't want you to listen to that guy because you see that first round. That guy was he clipped you and you was did some Harlem Shake stuff like that. Okay, I was worried from you and then I know that you're gonna go back to your hoods. And I remember you was Venice Beach in that drum circle when there was did that and you did your capoeira. Yeah. And I was touch that kick. It was like. I, I remembered back when you taught me that kick, and I thought to myself, hey, Renato's here, I gotta throw the kick in his honor. Well, hey, the, the shame of it is you didn't give me no credit after the fight. You no, know, when I, I got it too emotional and the family was involved, and I knew everybody who was there around with the drums was gonna remember you. Yeah, but the problem is I was got emotional when you didn't say nothing, because I gotta make some money. And the people gotta know who, who I'm training. You guys think you got Winkle, Henry Winkler's John, you got uh, Von Beethoven, Von Ludwig's, Von Bang Bang, whatever the fuck that guy's name is. And then uh, you have uh, the other guy, uh, Greg Gast. And the next thing you're gonna be with, they're gonna give the credit to before and they're gonna give the t credit to Tito Jackson, Jermaine Jackson, all that kind of stuff. Okay? The Jackson Five. Okay, you understand that? Forget about the Jackson Five. Okay. Okay, you, you're here now and you're in the big chimney, okay? Forget about all that stuff. I'm gonna bring you to the top. And you see when you go to your capoeira, and you was brought that kick over to that guy, and he was bigger than you, like that. Look like a big uh, Puerto Rican light skinned guy. And I'm proud of you, okay, my brother? You, and this was, you know, you don't forget, my God was protecting yeah. to you. Yeah. My brother, my brother. Ah! Caralho. Don't cry. No, you get emotional, you get emotional again. I don't want they, they want to invite you back. They're going to think you lead an alternative lifestyle. They don't want you to they think you're soft. You already built a, a good reputation. Uh, turn the camera off that one. Um, most of you know that most of you that have trained 10th Planet for years, like Alder and all the old school guys like Victor, 
you know that the philosophy has been, um, the, the way I've, I've been cutting up the pie has been offense, 75%, everything else, 25%. We've been focusing on squeezing that for the last 10 years, closing the deal, polishing the setups. 25%, you know, we did a little defense, didn't really go over defense too much. In my opinion, I thought, man, who, who would be better at trying this? A guy who went to a school that had 30 black belts, and he was a white belt. 30 black belts, and he's a white belt, right? And then there's another school, 30 white belts. Oh no, they're all white belts. If the white belt in the school with all the black belts, if how is he ever gonna work on his triangles? How is he ever gonna develop any kind of triangles that they're just rolling with these beasts on the goddamn Right? They already know how to get out there. Masters of getting out of the triangle. How is this white belt ever gonna do? He might be a guy who doesn't have a triangle. Not everyone is known for their triangles. Not everyone, certain people are known for their triangles. They lock it up, it's done, son, it's done. They know how to close that shit up. There's some people that are known for that. If people don't describe you as, when they're, when they're talking about your style, like stay away from his guard, he's got insane triangles, then your triangles just not developed. You haven't focused on it. There's so much to focus on, you just, you, you're better at other shit. You might be known as a Kimura guy, but you're not known as a triangle guy. The one thing that I've learned over the years is the triangle guy are always guys that got good at triangles in the beginning. It's so easy to get white belts in triangles. If you understand the triangle concept, you understand one arm in, one arm out. It takes a while for guys to get really good at stopping triangles. But it's actually really easy to understand the concept and get really good at it. So I, when I see white belts doing triangles, pop triangles all day, they just, boom, triangle. Like kids, kids that are really good at triangles, they're setting it up, it's just a pop triangle, boom. It's nice and easy, bam. They almost, it's almost like a delusion every day. They get delusional. They think, no one's gonna stop my triangle. But really, I look at that and go, eventually they're gonna stop the triangle. Eventually, that's gonna, you can't just pop triangle, dude. You can't just, it's not that easy. Just push their hand in and you, you nail the triangle. It gets really, really complicated as you go up in levels. You understand? But it's okay. Let them get delusional with the triangle. They think they can do it. They think they can stop everybody. By the time they figure out, that, damn, it's hard to get triangles now. At least they're really good at closing the deal because they've done it so much. They can close it. Now they need to work on different setups. Like, how am I going to set this up? i got to really think about it now. But they will think about it because they have motivation because they already can close the deal with the triangle. They're already known for the triangle. They like being known for their triangle. They don't want to give up on their move. They don't want people to say, oh, they shut my triangle down. Now you can make that shit work. And then those people, bam. Just like Ryan Hall's an example. Ryan Hall's an example of a guy he was trying, he got like 200 triangles in competition when he first started out. Everyone was trying. Then it got harder and harder just to get, and then no one wanted him even being a full guard. Then he needed setups just to get the full guard. Then he had to get the triangle, but then it was hard to get the triangle, so then he got the full guard, he had the setups, and the pop triangle wasn't working like it did as a white belt in a blue belt. Then he had to get really, really tricky. You understand? Then, then the setups become very important. Same thing, that's one of the reasons why I didn't teach defense that much. I thought, you'll figure out the defense eventually. It ain't that big of a deal. You'll feel it out. If you get tapped out, it's not that big of a deal. You know what, if you got tapped out on the triangle, the guy who got you on the triangle, he's your teammate. His triangle just got a little better. How about that? That's how I look at it. I don't care who wins. They're both my guys. You understand? I'm always rooting for the guy with the offense. And if the guy's setting something up, and these are both my guys, I will coach the guy through the offense. Let's get the offense together. We'll worry, on the we'll worry about the defense on your own. Figure it out on, you know, on your own. We're going to spend our time getting really good at closing the game. That's what I wanted 10th Planet to be known for. Guys that can close the goddamn deal. And, you know, you don't have that much time to work on everything. The best thing to do, obviously, is to do what we're doing. Focus on the setup. Focus on closing the deal. Focus on submissions, not just points. Focus and spend a lot of time on being an untappable guard recovery, all that. There's just not that much time. You guys don't come that much. Most guys come on average two hours a week, on average.
Some guys are gnarly and they come five days a week, six days a week, or six classes. Uh, but you come two days a week, shit, that's two hours. That's two hours of drilling because it's two hours each. But the hour of sparring, we're not counting. That was just the hours of drilling. two hours of drilling. Damn. There's about 30 hours of drilling that we need to do if we want to cover everything. So what do we do? If you guys came every day to class, every day, like college, and you miss a day, and it's a big deal, you miss a day, shit, you gotta catch up, dude. If it was like that, like college, then, you know, martial arts instructors could put together a curriculum and, and design our uh, video game character whatever way we want. We have all the time they have to show. It's gonna be easy. All my guys are gonna have these passes. All my guys are gonna have these sweeps. All my guys, we're not gonna, like, you know, the head instructor, it's up to him what he wants to teach his students. And what I want to teach is what I think is the best. Personally, what I think. And, and that's coming from input from all of my head instructors as well. We're looking at what works in competition. We're all coming together. We're sending each other links. Check out this move. Look at this. I'm looking at Marcelo's teaching, taking that from that. Boom. Going over to Jean Jacques, taking his shit. You understand? So now I decide, shit. Thought about long and hard. How are we going to, how could we do that? How could we do the ultimate? Have time to keep doing what we're doing, squeezing next, getting really good at closing the deal, really good, slamming it home. And spend a lot more time than just the rolling on, spend extra time on defense and guard recovery and all that stuff too. How are we gonna do that? How could we, we still got two hours, we didn't add more time. The way we do it is we gotta start memorizing flows. The teaching is what takes forever. That's two hours. We gotta factor in the teaching in there too, not just the drilling, the teaching. So if we memorize kata, like flows with all the basics, the basics comprised of, of sweeps and passes and defense that I think is the most important based on my experience. So you guys, I'm putting this together. You guys are gonna have to kind of trust me. The passes that just memorize the warm ups. So that's what these warm ups are about. There's eight sets, eight sets of warm-ups, and damn, it took a while to tweak them and make them perfect. And you all have to memorize it. And you, know, you guys have heard this speech before too, but I'm mastering the system, this is the, what, what this is for. You gotta just keep slamming it home. We have to memorize these warm-ups. And we're almost there. We're almost there. Last night went beautiful. We got through the warm-ups in fucking 12 minutes, and we got through a whole class, we got to focus on what, what we're gonna go over today. Side control, recovery. Back to the goal. So goddamn important. I used to always rely on my flexibility to regain guard if someone passed my guard. My flex, it was all about looking for spots, using my flexibility. But not everyone has the flexibility, so it's hard to teach all the jailbreak stuff and the flows and all this fancy shit that you know, your legs can do. When they're really flexible, all the different escapes that you have and recoveries just because of your flexibility. But not everyone has the flexibility. The best is to have all the non-flexible recoveries and all the flexible recoveries all combined in one and working together. That's the ultimate. So I'm assuming that you're all working on the next level of your flexibility. Whatever level you're on, we're always working on the next level. I'm working on the next level. I'm not at the top. Everyone's working on the next level of flexibility. Next level of that lotus. Get it deeper. Let's go even deeper. Let's cross our feet behind our head. That's the ultimate. You cross your feet behind your head, you're there. Now you're going to be unmountable. You understand? So everybody, whether your flexibility is shit, you're working on the very next level. What's the next level from your shit? Not so much shit. And then not a little, little less shit. Then it's looking pretty good. It's decent. Ah, you can hit mission control now. No problem. And then pop, you keep, you're always working on the next level, right? So while we're always working on the next level, let's master and polish the non-flexible ways of recovering body. And what I did is I combined, again, personally for me, I always use my flexibility to recover guard, but I'm gonna add for my own personal game all the non-flexible uh, side control escapes. And there's so many theories on side control escape. It's not as easy and as basic as you might think. There's so many different theories. You're watching, the, you know, uh, Henner and Hero, and they got their style of side control the, uh, escape. I'm like, wow, that's pretty cool. We could add that too. And the best though is Marcelo Garcia. You ain't, you ain't holding his ass aside. He's gonna Heisman the shit out of you. Got the Heisman from him. Just watching him hit Heisman. God damn. 
You ain't side controlling him. And we've had some guys that were already good at this Heisman uh, for uh, years, um, like uh, Brent Mattel, 10th kind of black belt. He was hitting Heisman's forever. And incorporating the Heisman, the ultimate shrimp, where we're leaning on the door, and I'll explain that, and come always being hyper aware. Someone just passed your guard. You can feel that they're passing your guard. You know they're passing. You're not gonna magically come to the conclusion that he passed your guard and he's already in side control. You see it, that's what he's been trying to do. So when someone passes the guard, very important that he passes the guard, but he doesn't have you, there's many levels of passing the guard and side control. If he has you in full twister side control here, where I'm smashing the arms on him, it's too late. He let me turn. He's in some, he's in some trouble. Man, right here. Don't ever let a guy get here. If he knows what he's doing. If he can hook. I was in the bucket to be the 
sticks and end it with a hoe so I could fuck it. So I told the bitch I was with that I'm going to the snack bar and got the fuck out the car. Went to the fuck and I looked through the window. See video game son, that's how we do. Come on, one minute left, let's go. On, left, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 60 seconds, let's go. What one minute left, push. Come on, this is it. One minute, let's go. Go, 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 go. One minute. Go, 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 60 seconds. 60 seconds, give me all you got. change because of you. Um, I remember when he was on his steps to to be involved with Jiu Jitsu and uh, took me a few months to make sure that if he believed on him, just a little bit, he'd be able to achieve something that he might not never even imagine he would be able to. And I'm talking about to the fighting world. And that was going back to, I'm guessing, 10 years ago, which, which he did what nobody could believe could, was possible to do. But I remember the practice, the training, he was able to, right back on his mind, my main job wasn't about his techniques anymore, just to work on his mind to make him get in a point that 
he would do it. He did it. He went to Brazil and uh, he submitted the icon of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, the family, my cousin, the family that creates Jiu Jitsu. And after that point on, I think it was a big turn of his life because he believed in himself so much that not only I'm going to seminars in other countries and I go there and say, like, oh, do you, know, do you know Eddie Bravo? So yeah, I know him. And now is the funny thing is he reached a level that in the sport that not many people are or not getting there yet in terms of popularity. And again, he has so many followers, people that he created a system with his game. He came back from Brazil. I remember I got my black belt and said, man, you're a brown belt, but now I have no words to say. You did what nobody was able to do in our sport. Uh, very happy and excited that he's going to be having a match again against Hoyler on the end of the year. And as I mentioned before, is the biggest difference from that time and now is now he's more mature. Now his game is a hundred times better. Now he is stronger. Now he has no fear. Now he's way more dangerous than before. And I think it's the chances for him to win. It's up there. I have no doubts. If he does his homework, you're gonna see that what happened there happened for a reason and will happen again. Mr. Eddie, come over here. He tells people that no gi is better than gi, but he never mentioned that he trained 11 years with gi first. Oh. <laughs> On camera. <laughs> When it comes to the word confidence, I never understood it. I was a big football fan. And you know, you'd always hear the commentator say, well, he's going to need more confidence, or his, he doesn't have any confidence. As a, as a kid growing up, and even a man in his early 20s, my like, confidence, I don't get it. All these guys must have confidence. They're in the NFL, they must have confidence. What are they talking about? Are they just saying something just to say something? And then John Jock would tell them. Uh, about confidence, and, and like he mentioned earlier, I had a problem with confidence. I, uh, as a blue belt, I would freeze at tournaments, and then I, get, I got some confidence, and then I started doing well, and then when he gave me my purple belt, bam, there goes the confidence, down the tubes again. I'm like, oh, I can't compete with these. And then I would freeze up, and then slowly, I started to understand what confidence means, slowly. And... When I was training for Hoyler the first time, he had so much confidence in him. Like, I was just happy I got a free trip to Brazil. I was like, <laughs> I wasn't trying to win nothing. Uh, these guys are going to kick my ass, aren't they? The black belt uh, world champions? And John Jock goes, you're going to go out there and you're going to impose your game and you're going to win. I'm like, okay, you can say that all you want, but I'm going to go out there and have fun. And I guess, you know, I went out there with zero expectations and maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. But... Uh, uh, one thing that Jean Jacques told me a long time ago, he, he said quite a few things. He said, I never, I never worked on my defense consciously. My style has always been, my offense is going to be my defense. That's what I took from football. Like, I'm going to make my offense my I'm going to go after him. If I'm going after him, he's got to defend. So I never really developed great defense. But Jean Jacques kept telling me, he knew that was a hole in my game. And he said, he said, when you get your uh, when you work on your, when you have good defense, you have so much confidence. And again, I didn't really get it back then. When you have defense, how about I just attack? Isn't that like defense? I didn't get it. But now, after all of these years, 19 years of jiu-jitsu, I understand exactly what he means. And a big part of my training camp for this rematch is getting my defense together. Finally, after all these years, sitting back and breaking down defense. And I've, I've been out, of, out here a few times and all I do is sit down and we go down the checklist. We're the best defenses for everything, getting out of side control, all the stuff I never thought about. To me, side control escape, 
I used my flexibility to get out of bad spots. And I always relied on my flexibility. And now, I'm still gonna use my flexibility and it worked in the first master boiler. It saved my ass. But now I'm working with just the non-flexible -flex techniques, defensive techniques, uh, uh, guard recovery drills. And I'm sitting here with John John, piece by piece, making it all happen. And let me tell you something. My side control, like I said before, it was random spots where I'd use my flexibility, random explosions. Not anymore. My side control defense, thanks, or, or recovery, thanks to Jean-Jacques, he sparked a whole system now. Now, and I don't, you guys probably have the same system, but now I'm taking seminars about side control escapes based on what Jean-Jacques has t uh, taught me. And I got, there's some other stuff that I added as well, though, but it all sparked from Jean-Jacques. Most of my unorthodox style is all based on Jean-Jacques' principles. Oh, my whole game, if you look at my uh, rubber guard game, it's all based on his overhead. You know, most people, they don't uh, uh, develop a strong overhead like Jean-Jacques. They're yanking and pulling sleeves all the time. You know, but Jean-Jacques has the best overhook in the game, and we saw it in Abu Dhabi. And that's, my style is based on that. You know, and even stuff that Jean-Jacques really didn't even want to do that I was doing, like all the Twister stuff and all, he was right there to show me the, the mistakes.